Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who loves your sales, guests, service, peasants, vassals, minions, meat sacks, hooties? I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today we're going to go back to Yemen. And uh, by the way, uh, I wore this turtleneck again today because uh, apparently a lot of uh, my uh, trolls uh, think I'm gay because I wear turtlenecks. And uh, I'm sorry to disappoint them. I know I, they wish I was gay, but, uh, well, I'm just not. Uh, I often say, uh, hell, I'm not gay. I'm barely even happy. But anyway, let's get back to uh, Yemen. And uh, this dramatic uh, intervention by uh, Saudi Arabia, we've got a lot more information now. And, and uh, like I say, I'm not uh, prone to do uh, topical uh, scoop news stories these days, uh, but uh, this one's very important. So let's get to it. So we have Saudi Arabia. Let's look at the countries that are involved. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain. Uh, those, of course, we expected. And then uh, we also have Egypt, Morocco, Sudan, and Jordan. And uh, one of the questions I had after I did my previous video was, uh, what exactly does uh, Saudi Arabia want to gain by doing airstrikes? Are they going to be use the same strategy as the uh, United States uh, in Syria, hoping to turn the tide just by using airstrikes? But it's, it turns out uh, they're actually planning a, a ground Assault, And this is where it gets interesting because I just looked at a Reuters article and they said that Saudi Arabia um, was contemplating an intervention but hadn't decided. And uh, But uh, all the other articles I've been seeing are saying that uh, this, uh, this invasion will take place. So it just goes to show uh, one needs to examine at least a, a few sources before going out there and stirring up a lot of... Uh, Fear monger, because one of the other things that was brought up uh, was the idea that there was going to be 150,000 troops involved, which is an eye-popping number. It says a lot, but as it turns out, uh, actually they're they're discussing an invasion using 40,000 troops. The 150,000 troop figure is what uh, Saudi Arabia apparently is uh, deployed along their border or thereabouts. Uh, Saudi Arabia has committed 100 fighters uh, to airstrikes. Uh, thus far, uh, with uh, other planes, from, obviously from Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Egypt, and um, so that's quite a few airstrikes. Apparently, they were hitting uh, uh, major military installations and uh, key uh, strategic points. And uh, one, one of the things that's interesting about that, of course, is here we go again. Uh, the U.S. or one of its allies, in this case Saudi Arabia, is uh, bombing. A material that was built by the United States, uh, weapons that were supplied by the United States, although I'm sure all the weapons are gone by now. And uh, as I brought up in the previous video, the country's awash in weapons. There's a complete listings of what the, what was taken and probably distributed between Al-Qaeda and the Houthis. Um, and then there's certain special forces and military that are still loyal to the, the previous president, uh, who also are heavily armed and, and retain their weapons. So um, so anyway, apparently Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and, and some of these other countries are going to supply uh, these ground forces, this 40,000 troops. And uh, one source even mentions that Egyptian troops are already off the coast, uh, ready to land. And then there will be another intervention from uh, Saudi Arabia. And, of course, it may include uh, troops from Pakistan as well, because a lot of ground troops that protect the Saudi Arabian kingdom uh, have been uh, uh, Pakistani troops. Uh, in the past. So, of course, one of the other dramatic events is that uh, their president, Hadi, has uh, left the country. Uh, so Hadi has left the building. And um, this is uh, one of those uh, classic uh, 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 post-colonial situations where the, the present president, uh, who replaced the last president, Saleh, who was toppled after 30 years, um, there's still a rivalry going on, and Saleh is still in charge of a lot of the military forces in that country. They're still loyal to him. So uh, Saleh has a lot to do with, with the dynamics that are going on in this country, and that's what makes it another classic uh, U.S. foreign policy uh, clusterfuck uh, is just ending up in these situations uh, where we get involved in these rivalries. And, but it doesn't matter. The United States supported Saleh. And then uh, once the dust settled, the United States supported Hadi, so we have no, have no problem. And uh, Saleh was uh, uh, deposed during the Arab Spring in 2011, so 
Uh, this guy Hadi has been in, in charge for the last four years, and uh, well, he's in charge of Jack shit right now, and uh, Jack just left town. So, uh, um, so there's there's precedents for this in the past. Um, apparently, uh, Egypt intervened in the 1960s, and interestingly enough, in that situation, Egypt was entering to fight uh, Saudi uh, forces that were backed by Saudi Arabia. In this uh, instance, uh, they are allies, and then. Saudi Arabia intervened in 2009 when there was an unrest previously. Um, so, so here we have um, the, the same hallmarks uh, that we see in a lot of these other situations in the Middle East. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through a list, but first I wanted to mention a comment that a, a Saudi official made about the Houthis and uh, complained that they are a, quote, a tool in the hands of foreign powers, unquote. Obviously, taking a poke at um, Iran, but uh, the utter uh, hypocrisy of everything that most uh, government leaders say over the world uh, continues to be a, uh, a boundless source of amusement. Uh, so for uh, a Saudi to talk about uh, uh, forces that are a tool in the hands of foreign powers, uh, that could be just about any bad actor uh, operating in the Middle East today, including people that the Saudis support. So I call bullshit. And uh, so let's go. Through like uh, what 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 do we see here? What uh, what are what what are we going to learn? What are we going to see in this uh, new front in this uh, Middle Eastern uh, chaos? Uh, well, we, we're seeing again uh, something touted as, as a U.S. foreign policy success uh, turning out to be a disaster. We're seeing the same strategy of setting up a proxy army and flooding the country with uh, guns and uh, propping up a thug. Uh, uh, and generally in very undemocratic situations, and this is the United States idea of spreading democracy, unfortunately. And then we have uh, this continual uh, drone war that's been going on in Yemen, very controversial, and uh, there was talk of a potential uh, blowback or repercussions, and uh, well, we have them, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, then we also have, uh, once again, a, uh, another proxy army set up by the United States, and its allies uh, set up that pretty much dissolved in the field, and its loyalty split between all the uh, all the different groups that are operating there. Uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have the same failed U.S. strategy uh, revealing, revealing itself. Um, we have a, another flood of weapons, and uh, so just in case there wasn't enough weapons floating around and, and, and all over that region, well, here, there's more. And uh, and then we also have a uh, 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 a potential for a civil war, and um, uh, if, if there's a occupation, um, and that's what this uh, 40,000 troops seems to indicate, that there will be an occupation in a, in a long-term um, engagement, and it will be uh, pretty messy because uh, everybody on all sides, and there's multiple sides, um, are all very, very heavily armed. Um, we also have a, a situation, once again, where Al-Qaeda is fighting our enemy. So we have Al-Qaeda fighting the Houthis, and we have Al-Qaeda fighting the, the uh, forces that are go uh, loyal to the previous government. We have Al-Qaeda fighting forces that are loyal to the, the uh, recent government, and uh, so uh, much like we find in Syria. So uh, how interesting that now all of a sudden Al-Qaeda are our buddies and the good guys and are fighting on the right side, and uh, depending on the country, of course, uh, now ISIS are the new uh, the badasses. And uh, speaking of I ISIS, uh, obviously this is going to lay uh, Yemen wide open for the potential for a serious uh, presence of ISIS to appear there, and that would be uh, quite a, a crown in their uh, caliphate if that would happen. Certainly Saudi Arabia would be incredibly exposed, and, uh, and also just uh, the very nature of the country of Yemen uh, is just the kind of place, the kind of chaos, the kind of poverty, um, and the kind of uh, hardware environment that uh, ISIS thrives on. And, uh, and let's not forget that the, this intervention, um, even though the, all these sides are kind of split up right now and warring against each other, uh, there's nothing like a, a good old invasion by a foreign power uh, to unite the opposition. So we're probably going to see some of these groups uh, consolidate down and uh, resist the, the occupation as uh, normal uh, people would do. So uh, so that's a, a, another uh, effect we're going to we can look forward to it. I know there's a lot of um, sensationalist headlines out there about uh, oil going through the ceiling, and uh, 
for, for right now, there's a little uh, blip upwards, or a, a pretty good-sized uh, blip upwards in the price of oil, but I think eventually once uh, things settle in and the, the war, we get used to the war, just like everywhere else in the Middle East, but we're going to see the uh, price of oil uh, go back down again. And um, there's just too much glut. Uh, there's too much production going on out there. And uh, prices will continue to, to go down. It doesn't really matter that spring and summer are coming up. And uh, I also find it interesting that we have uh, the timing with the uh, Iran nuclear deal. I'm not exactly sure um, what that would have to do with it. I think the, the Saudi uh, timing pretty much has to do with the events unfolding this way. And it just so happens that it's going to play into their, the Saudi oil play that we've been seeing going on. But uh, it'll be interesting to see um, what kind of effect this has uh, on the Iran deal. I suspect none, but um, there will be uh, those who bring it up. And um, So let's see. Uh, and, and last but not least, of course, uh, once again we see uh, countries like Saudi Arabia are the ones who are invading their neighbors. So uh, let's see. We had Iraq invaded uh, Iran at one point. We have uh, Saudi Arabia intervening in Ye Yemen a couple times. Uh, we have Egyptian planes and, uh, doing sorties in Egypt, and now uh, going to be in Yemen, and we have all these Middle Eastern countries uh, uh, bombing in Syria and Iraq now, and all this other stuff. I, I, I still find it rather interesting that everybody, uh, or I shouldn't say everyone, but there's so much uh, fear out there of Iran, and I don't see Iran invading any countries around them or bombing any countries around them. I'm sure they operate with proxies like everybody else on the fucking planet, and certainly everybody in that region, uh, layers and layers and layers of them uh, from that region and around the globe. But uh, like I say, here we are where uh, I don't see Iran behaving uh, like all these other countries. But, uh, well, there you have it. That's a, certainly a topic for another time. So, uh, so anyway, there's an update on uh, this new uh, intervention that we have of all, uh, all these uh, Arab countries uh, the U.S. is uh, uh, supporting them right now. It'll be interesting, to, in, in, a, in a big way, it'll be interesting to see if the U.S. gets more involved. Uh, I doubt it. I think Saudi Arabia is going to handle this one in, in, in pragmatic terms. That's good to see for a change, and uh, well, they should. But uh, unfortunately, the result, like I say, is going to be long-term conflict. Uh, it's going to be an occupation. Um, well, um, I don't know. So theoretically, maybe they could get control of the situation fairly quick, quickly. It's a very uh, relatively uh, small population. But uh, anyway, um, so there are some of the implications and details about the situation, and uh, it just adds another layer of complexity to this uh, this whole scenario in the Middle East. And uh, undoubtedly, uh, it's going to continue these these tensions, particularly the Sunni Shia tension. Uh, continues, then uh, we will uh, probably see more contagion. It seems uh, inevitable considering everything we've seen, but I don't know how many countries there are left that haven't descended into chaos. So uh, there's the blueprint. We see it yet again. Yeah, man. Yemen. Yeah, I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too. <laughs>